Good morning guys and welcome to another exciting episode of One Man in His Boat. In this episode we're going to be looking at fitting the ram. Now there's a wee bit of discrepancy with this episode because the start of the episode was actually meant to go on at the end of episode 14 but my editing skulls weren't up to scratch. No, that's not the point. We were actually waiting on parts. <laughs> so we're going to get on with that this morning guys. If you're interested in watching this, please stay tuned. But before we go on to actually fitting the ram guys, we're going to give you a wee quick update on news. Uh, I had a very interesting phone call with Seafish uh, two days ago and we got a little interview for their Seafish magazine, yay! So that'll be coming out in November, that'll give us all something to look forward to. Uh, w once it's out, I'll download it onto our uh, Facebook page and Instagram and all the rest of the usual contact bits. Uh, but yeah! Absolutely chuffed the bits that we're actually getting interviews for other magazines now. Uh, we've already, already been in East Lothian Life, but that was for our last vessel, the Rock Hopper of Percule. Uh, so, yeah, chuffed the bits, absolutely amazing. Oh, I nearly forgot, Fujifilm as well. We've been in a Fujifilm magazine too. So, yeah, things are on the up and we're fair chuffed. So, keep liking and sharing, guys. Remember, this channel won't happen without you guys watching, so please keep watching, subscribe, do the usual bits and bobs to help us get out to the big wide world, which we're nearly as far as, in fact we are as far as Australia now, because I've been talking to a, a lovely fairy in Australia, so that's us international now, for definite. Um, we're going to get on with uh, fitting the ram today. Uh, we've got a slight um, problem, well it's not really a problem, it's, it can be fixed, but... Um, the actual rudder is not lining up to the tiller arm. The tiller arm's off just a little bit, a wee smidge. Not exciting, but I'll, I'll show you exactly what's happening here. Now, what I've done here is... Oh, hold on, I'll get the camera work, sorry to do. I'm sorry for the lambs again. They just, they just seem to think they get fed every time somebody moves. Um, I've measured... The width of the skeg, I've drawn down the centre line, and I've kind of measured through the centre of the boat to where the rudder now stops. Now that's the rudder, dead square, dead centre. Don't know if we can go in there. There we go. Yeah, that's the centre. No, it doesn't look dead centre at these camera angles, but. So we'll go inside the boat and then we'll now see exactly how much it's off. It's only off by a little bit, but um, it just means that nothing will be square when we actually come to uh, fit the cylinder or slash the ram. Right guys, here we go. This is what it looks like when the rudder is actually squared and true to the skeg in the boat. We're a little bit off. As you can see, the distance from the tiller arm here to the edge of the box is shorter than there. That's a wee bit longer, so that means it's no running true to the boat. And then you can see this bit here, that's your centre line of the boat. So, aye, that should be the centre line like that. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the tiller arm off. We're going to drill a 12mm hole here because that's the connection you need between the ram and the actual tiller arm itself. And then we'll draw, drill another wee. Uh, a six millimetre hole for the rudder angle indicator. So that's today's task. We'll get that off, we'll get that sorted out, and then we can, once we've got everything back together again, we'll be able to put um, the cylinder kind of in place. We'll work out exactly what angles is what and how far the ram goes, and then we'll, we'll get the ram fitted. Yay! Thank you. 
Right, times like these, get the instructions out. Might as well. Just can I stop sliding on this boat? So guys, we've got a little bit of a problem. There's always problems. It's boats. There's nothing but problems with boats. Excuse me. Right, down here guys. Obviously I said we've got the tiller arm. Now the eye of the ram is quite small. And obviously this is a homemade version and it's very chunky. So what I'm going to have to do is take a good nick off this centre hole here. Uh, just for whenever the um, tiller arm rotates that it's not going to get caught up on this wee lug here. Now the arm itself, you can see it's actually just a wee bit smaller than what that wee lug is. So even if I put washers in there, I'm not sure if it's going to get enough freedom, shall we say. So, we've got that today to that end. And, da -da -da -da, I've got a rudder angle indicator that just won't fit where the ram is. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I really don't. I can't put make a box on that side because I'm wanting my exhaust to go here because that's obviously the highest point I can get for the exhaust itself because it has to be as close to the centre line as possible. And obviously the rudder's going to come a good bit across this way when I get full lock to the starboard side. Uh, so I need as much space as I can there for the exhaust. So yeah, interesting times ahead. A lot of thinking to do, I think. Right, so the total width I need for up here is 26 millimeters. That should give me the clearance I need. So obviously half of there, uh, 26 millimeters is 13 millimeters, which we have down here. So what I'm going to do is scribe the marks here, run it back an inch, then in, line everything up. That's where we're going to cut out. And obviously we use the, the centre of this wee hole that they've kindly supplied us with. I'm hoping it's straight dead centre. I'll, I'll double check before I, I cut anything. And then we should be good to go for our, uh, this side of the ram anyway. Then all we'll have to do is worry about the other side. Too bad, not too bad. You know when you get just one of those days where everything just doesn't go right? This is Barry's day. Anyway, now that I've replaced the broken drill bit, and I hadn't even started drilling yet, uh, we're now going to drill the um, tiller arm. We'll get up to 12mm once again. With stainless steel and that, you don't want to put a lot of heat in it. Start off small, plenty of um, lubrication, and just build your millimetres up at a time and you'll get there eventually but it's better doing it this way than hard fast and aggressive and doing a whole lot of damage A tier bits and B tier metal so let's go on with this guys for the second time <laughs> right oh safety first range your glasses I think I've just nudged this as well no no right let's get it on
perfect. Right, we just need to clean that up now. A few bit of over the grind, get the bars off. Jobs are getting. Right boys and girls, what we're going to do now is actually connect the cylinder now. Uh, we've drilled a hole for the tiller R. So we just actually have to find out how we, well, where we place this plate to bolt it all down. Now what we've got to do is actually mark the tiller arm and the, the bit of ground that it's on, this wee bit here, down a bit. Yes, yeah, so we've got to mark that to make sure it's nice and square so the rudder is square to the skeg. See if that lamb doesn't shut up, I'm going to boot it right up the back side. <laughs> To make sure the rudder is uh, square to the skeg, so we know that uh, this is actually square. And then what we'll have to do is, once we've got our marks, is put the ram full lock and make sure that we get full lock with the tiller arm. And that'll be the placement of where we need to put the bolts. So, but before we actually screw it and glue it and glaze it, we need to make sure it goes to the opposite side as well. There's no point in it going fully one way and it kind of contract all the way to the other side. Just so you can see what I'm seeing, guys. Right, that's one way. You still with me? There you are. And that's that way. There we go. Hmm. I think before I actually do anything, I'm going to swat up on this. I'm going to go on YouTube and actually see if somebody else has done this job. Because I want to do this correctly. I'm not waiting half about to it. That lamb's still ban and it's doing my nothing. <laughs> right. I guess we'll leave this till tomorrow, guys. I think I freaking need a beer of the day. It's just that kind of a day of the day. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, eh, yes, we've had an interesting time here. Right, I'm going to start with where I left off with the ram. Now, somebody's nicked it! No! <laughs> Look, it's missing! No! Right, we've had a little problem. Basically, it's all to do with my turn. When I do that, and do that, I couldn't get full lock at all. We we're only going to get to there, and we we're only getting to there. So basically, I didn't have a long enough arm to get the, a decent full lock to get the boat to turn, and I need this boat to turn. So what I've done is I've actually got in contact where I got the ram film originally, and they're going to do a swap with me. So thank you ASAP for that. But great guys. Um, what the system we had was a, M, a Vetus MTC-52 and now we're going from a MTC-52 up to an MTC-72 and that's a lot longer and the measurements that I've done with the measuring tape it should fit bang on, we should get the turn that we want and everything's hunky dory. Unfortunately, the part won't be posted until Monday. This is now Friday, so I've got all weekend to twiddle my thumbs.
Right boys and girls, just to let you know that I've not been mowing it while I've been waiting on parts. Uh, I got another attack at the gunnels yesterday. However, I'm not happy. I'm not happy bunny at all. Done the usual, 600 grit wet and dry. Um, getting a good rub over. And I painted it with a two and a half inch brush this time. Now I didn't can if maybe I was putting too much on the brush or what, but it's a wee bit bumpy with the, you can see the brush marks and the varnish. So, I was actually on YouTube just checking out all my other videos that I watched to get uh, tips and all the rest of it to, to give to you guys as well. And we've, I finally remember where I got that uh, tip about the, the brush about putting the tape around it so the varnish doesn't run all the way up to the stock. It was from tips from a shipwright, Mr. Lou. Now he does a great video on varnishing, so I'm going to uh, take his advice. And what we're going to do next with our gunnels is we're going to. Um, also, I've got another three coats today. That's the fifth coat it's just had. We're going to rub it down again, but any shiny bits, I'm going to actually rub with a bit of Scotch Bright. And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll this time. We're going to get, roll the varnish, and then we'll tip it. That's basically just running the brush very gently over it, so it spreads it out nice and evenly. I'm hoping that with a wee bit of practice that we'll actually get a, a good finish on the, on the gunnels. I've got another three coats to do it with, so hopefully by the eighth coat it'll be exactly what I want, which is like a sheet of glass. So, time will tell guys, time will tell. So boys and girls, after a little wait from the postman, i.e. over the weekend, uh, we eventually got our new Vetus Ram. Um, and it's arrived and it's shiny new. Now the difference between this Ram and the other one is about 130 millimetres. So that will make us be able to get a better turn on our rudder. Um, yeah, plus it's got a lot more pressure as well, so it's basically doing what Barry does best, doing it a little bit OTT because I actually phoned Vetus themselves and they said for this size of vessel, this size of horsepower that an MTC-52 would be perfect, he says that's more than ample so this is the one up from that, so you can imagine it's not going to have any bother, we should have it for years to come Right guys, so once again what we'll have to do is line up the centre, we'll, we'll get our um, tiller arm, oh, a bit stiff, centre on, then we'll put a ram in this location again. You can see I've already been cheating before the camera, not already marked it out. But what we'll have to do is obviously this section here and this section here is full lock to lock. Now even with an extra 130mm on the arm, we're still not getting full lock to lock. But Vitas don't do any other rams that's big, big enough to fit that range. They do do bigger ones, however, we'd have to buy a whole new headset and everything as well. And budget is just about done as is, so we can't afford to actually go and spend any more money than we already spent. So what we're going to do now, is we're going to set the ram up, then we're going to have to get the ram at 90 degrees from where the tiller arm is straight, and then make sure that when, whatever lock off we got, we'll mark it back down here, whatever lock off either side, and we'll measure it between the centre, and then that should make the C if it's actually equal, and if it's equal, then it will get marked, drilled and screwed over here, or bolted, should I say. And by God, I'm not going to bolt it. <laughs> I'm 
just going to double check that square guys, I'll be back in a second. Right guys, for all the videos that I've seen on YouTube, this is the, the one that I've seen the best for setting up your uh, steerage. When you're fitting the ram, it has to actually be straight when the rudder's in full lock here. Uh, as it comes round, there is maybe movement at the, the ball um, joint anyway. But like I say, as long as you've got that straight at either side, you know, when we actually get the look off that way as well. That's meant to be the rule of thumb for setting up it is uh, the steering. Um, forget what I said about it being in line with that and then setting it up for there because that's wrong. You set it up from the angle, from the turn. Boys and girls, I finally done it. I went and got my calculations all sorted out. Um, it's no professional by any means, so you architects, well, naval architects and all the rest, of it, who's probably got the formulas, blah blah blah. It's not happening here on this boat, mate. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm a fisherman. I've got a little bit of skill, and this is what I'm coming up with. If it steers the boat, I'm happy, and as long as it steers equally, which I'm sure it will. Right, anyway, we'll go down and I'll show you what I've done. Right, my lovelies. Right, all these pencil marks are the direction of what. The, sorry, the, the direction and the angle of what I've actually set the ram at. Now we're, we're pretty bang on at that. 
and what it calculates out to be is from this line here, this is my fifth attempt, it's 122 millimetres to the centre line and it's the same from this long section here, 122, so that's bang on, I would say that's more than enough for um, steerage. I've not got lock to lock because obviously you can see that's a lock off point there, that's a lock off point here. However, it's as good as damn it. And I'll show you over the back. I mean, that's a pretty good turn. I say it's not far off the mark. Hey, boys and girls, there we go. That's how close we are to the stop. It's not a lot. I'll try and put a couple of There's not even a finger width. So I say that's a success. We can actually get it, the ram actually screwed down now. And it is the same on the other side. I've already double checked it. So we're good to go. Yay! Hey guys, sorry for the wait there. Um, what we've got here. Still doesn't want to focus. Blooming camera. Can't wait for an upgrade. Anyway, what we've got here is 8mm bolt by 40mm. That should be more than enough to hold in our, our RAM for the present. I have got new stuff on its way. However, there was a wee problem with delivery, so it'll be sort of the end of this week before we actually get the materials that we need to put uh, the Lindsay B together. All the nuts and bolts. All the essential parts. That's just my bad management skills. But you don't know what you're going to need until the boat arrives and you can see what equipment you've got to fit where and all the rest of it. So you've no idea about um, the, the size of bolts you need, the length of bolts you need. So, right, we'll get on with this. Just a simple 8mm drill bits, drill through, and then bolt it down. And can I just say, it's really hard to get your balance on a boat that's got a wee slippy bit at the back like this. Right guys, normally I tell you, their pilot hole, take it up a bit at a time and all the rest they carry on. But we can need this accurate as, as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two holes, get them bolted in, and then we'll finish off the other two holes. It's just a matter of taking our time and trying to get everything squared and lined up. Let's say that is now square to that being at the, the furthest angle that way. And it'll be the same as it's to the furthest angle that way. The ram should be square. Right guys, now that we've got this, the cylinder actually able to be uh, bolted down, what we're going to do is now take it all apart because I'm not wanting any steward getting into the seals on the ram. So it's coming off, going back in the box, and once this back end is actually finished, then the ram will go back in and back on. Right boys and girls, since we're actually finished uh, placing our ram, and we know where it's going now, I want to keep working at the back end here. Now, the tiller arm, it needs to be greased, so I think that will be my next job, is actually fit the greaser for the uh, rear end here. So, the greaser comes like that, 
It's only a little one because it's only a little boat. But as you can see, it's shiny, shiny. Now you've got to get a tube kit to go with this, and it's got all the different fittings that you need for that kind of aperture. It's down here. You see where my finger is? Oh, there we are. So what I'm thinking about doing is obviously we, we know the turn of the tiller arm. However, I want to keep this section here for my exhaust. So the only place I've got left to play is up behind here. So I'm actually thinking about bolting it in round about there. Now it's going to be easy to get to because I'm going to have two large hatches on this bulkhead that's basically right in front of my nose here. Uh, so there'll be plenty easy access to the back end here, so it should be alright for topping up and stuff like that. So I think that'll be the next job, is we'll get that bolted down, and then we'll try and run the tube to where it needs to go. So guys, it's the same process as the ram. We're just going to mark the holes, get them drilled, and then we're going to bolt it down. Now what I've got here is um, eight, 6 mm by 40 mm bolts. Now they might be a bit long for such a small part, but it's the only thing I've got, so at least it's all A4. Uh, I managed to find um, some A4 nylocks as well, so once this is fitted, it's fitted. This time though, I will pile it, because there isn't a lot of room to get down, so we'll just make a wee note of where the 6mm drill bit needs to go but we'll just use a wee 2.5mm drill bit to get through the first one. So let's get on it! professional job with that. <laughs> right guys, obviously there's an awful lot of tube there and we're only going a small distance but I will say this, eh, have extra because you do again how if, if things may change, designs may change, I mean I've still got a um, rudder angle indicator to fit and I still don't know where that's going as yet but I definitely want to get my exhaust in first because that's the main priority obviously, can't run an engine without the exhaust gone out somewhere and I don't want to have it at uh, the port side of the boat because the higher up I've got it, the happier I'll be, that's for sure so once we get the bulkhead in, we'll get the this part of the exhaust all sorted out then we'll have a rough idea of where we're putting a rudder angle indicator maybe have to build a, se a separate subframe for it but we'll see, we'll see Right, let's get it on. Right, what I'll do now is I'll actually attach the tube end to there, then we'll know how much we've got to cut, and then Bob's your uncle. Ooh. Yeah. Right, all these fittings, I'll have to zoom in. Excuse me, guys. And how clear are you? There you go. Right. Oh god, it's went all daft. All these fittings are different sizes, different thicknesses. So it's just a matter of finding the right one for the right bit. In fact, I think the two are the same. Right, we'll try them first, see how we get one. And it's not that one. Is it going to be that one? Oh, your beauty! There you go. That's that one fits. And also that'll be the wee one. Hey, look at that! Now I have a spear. Right, I'll get you back, focus back into where we need to be. Let's see, can I wait for a camera upgrade? <laughs> Jeff will be cursing me now. <laughs> Bleh.
So there we have it guys. Right, a lot of you are probably thinking, geez oh Baz, that's a long line for, for our greaser just for the stern tube. However, it's the most natural course for the tube to go. If you have it too short, it'll no, it'll no do very well for bending because it's actually quite a solid wee hose. So I'm chuffed with that. That'll do me. Right. That's solid, that's solid. It's sealed. Can't ask any better than that. So, what next? I don't know. <laughs> Right my lovely lot, thank you very much for watching, that's the end of another great episode, um, I just hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, if you did, please smash that like button, thank you, um, tick the notification bell, please think about subscribing, because I'm wanting to put more and more out every week, um, just get content out to you guys, I mean after all, I've got to keep you entertained haven't I? <laughs> Leave a comment below if you wish, and I will see you in the next episode, thank you very much guys. Oh, hear the bike. It's always somebody in the bloody road when you try to film me. God, I'm like a ghost. <laughs> Get apart from Ghostbusters 3. Um, bloody cameras. Oh, there we are. Hey, hey, I'm alive. Hey boys and girls, what we're going to go, eh, uh, no, I'll start that again, because I can't get bloody comfy. <laughs> in front of me. Right boys and girls, since we're uh, finished placing the ram, I want to keep working at the back of the boat. Now, the back of the tiller here, we actually need to grease it. So what I'm going to do now is actually fit my, um, my grease. Right, take three. Ow. Ow. Take three. Right, boys and girls. So, this is going to be a good one for the bloody uh, for the outtakes this time, I tell you. It's going to be about ten minutes worth. <laughs> right, anyway. Take four. Well, no really glued, we're not glued. Gonna have to think of something like that. It's gonna be um marked and bolted. Yeah, I'm just waffling now. <laughs> I might actually take it direct to the that or just on the back of this. Depends how far it fastens up. I think that'll go on the way in. That's the wrong bloody in, Barry. Right, we'll take two on that one. <laughs>